Hi, and welcome to Beers with the Beard. I'm the Beard. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Hive AVB Avdeck control software. This is a software you can use to take a look at the different settings that are on AVB devices, as well as connect streams between the two of them. Uh, this particular piece of software also provides some additional login information and other features and options. This is an Avdeck controller that is made by one of the engineers at L Acoustics. It's a little tricky to find because uh, it's not on a manufacturer's website. It's not on L Acoustics website. It's on GitHub. Uh, but if you take a look at the description below, I have posted a link to our friends over at Audio Network Channel uh, who have a video explaining how to find it and download it. They also have links of where to get it for both Mac and PC. So we're gonna take a look at that software and just do a quick overview right now. Um, but real quick, before I forget, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give us a like, and if you wanna be updated anytime we post new videos, hit that little bell icon so you get the alerts. All right, let's dive in. All right, so here is the Hive software. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do when you get the software up and running is you up here in the upper left-hand corner, you wanna choose the right Ethernet interface that you're going to be using. So uh, there's a handful of interfaces available on my computer. Uh, these red ones aren't currently available right now, uh, but I'm using the EN6, which is this display Ethernet. So if I've got that selected, that's what is connected up to my AVB network here. And you'll see I've got my Studio Live 64S as well as my MacBook set up here. Uh, to set up your MacBook as a, or any Apple computer as a AVB endpoint, uh, I have another video on that that will explain how to go through that. So um, if that's something that you're interested in doing, check out the other video uh, on how to set up your Mac computer as an AVB endpoint or an AVB device. I've already done that here and that's why it's showing up in the software. So once you've got the correct ethernet port selected, the first thing you'll see at the top is a list of all the AVB devices it sees on the network. Uh, there'll be logos over here for those who support it, and you'll see none of that's here right now. Uh, compatibility, this is just showing you that these are both IEEE 1722.1 devices. You get the entity ID, the name, uh, if there's a group associated with it, what its master media clock ID is and name. Um, again, some of this stuff isn't going to be used in all applications or fully implemented at this time, uh, but you get the basics here. Now over to the right, if I select one of these devices, over on the right it's going to show me in this entity model inspector exactly how it's set up. I see what the configuration is. It's on configuration zero, which uh, means that it's the base configuration. Uh, and then it shows what the different audio streams are set up as and what their names are. There's some other audio information here as well. Again, this gets really geeky. Uh, a lot of this stuff that is in here is valuable information for our engineers when they're working on uh, bringing up a new AVB device or troubleshooting a network to try and find information that's going on. Uh, for most applications, some of this stuff is gonna be unneeded, uh, especially if you're just setting up a basic AVB network. A lot of this stuff isn't gonna be something that is gonna provide any sort of valuable information to you unless you are doing some really deep troubleshooting or developing uh, a new device that is going to be running on AVB. So uh, you can break this out into its own window or close it. So I'm just gonna close it for now. Uh, we can also go back and get it back if we just go to view, uh, then we can open it back up again to our entity model inspector. It'll pop back up, but let's get rid of it for now. All right, the other cool thing about this software is you can move all the different views around a size thing. So this is my routing grid. And so I'm gonna have all the talkers, that's the sends over on the left, and the listeners, or what's receiving, are across the top. So you see the arrows are shaped in the direction that the signal is flowing. And you'll see here, I've already got uh, sends one through eight of my Studio Life 64S are going to the input stream uh, one through eight on my MacBook Pro. So uh, you can bring up a legend. This is gonna bring up a window that will tell you what each of these things means. Little handy thing there. You can close it there or on the X. And I can make connections simply by clicking in the circle here. Some other things I can do in this grid is I can show and hide 
all the streams that are on affected device, or I can do it all at once. Same thing for the sends or the talkers. All right, and then the other thing that's really handy in this application is this logger down here. So this is a log of all of the uh, traffic that has happened on the AVB network as it pertains to uh, the AVB uh, communication. So you'll get a timestamp, you get what the layer is, the level, and then what the message was. Again, this is really handy for the engineers when they're troubleshooting stuff on a large network. Uh, it can also be great if you are just trying to see why something didn't connect right or why, if something dropped offline. Uh, the other cool thing is here is you can uh, trash it so it'll just kind of refresh what's there or you can also uh, save this data uh, as a file so that if you need to send it to somebody uh, to take a look at and, and report on, you can do that. Um, that's the basics of it. Uh, one last thing, if we go up into the settings here, you'll see uh, you have a few different settings that you can choose. Some stuff's grayed out. Again, um, it's not everything isn't fully implemented yet, but we're getting pretty close. I'm gonna, just going to change the color because uh, the default color is purple, but I happen to like teal. So I'm going to change it to teal. Um, and there you go. So a couple other uh, options here. Um, you can show talkers on top. Actually, I'm going to check that box because I like showing the talkers on top. Uh, that's the way a lot of the other software that's available for audio network routing works. So I'm going to set that option here for myself. Um, you can always show arrow tips or always show arrow end. I'm just going to leave that the way it is right now. We're going to close that. And so now you can see these were the connections I'd made over here. I like my talkers to be uh, at the top. I like the flow of audio to go like the flow of a rain gutter it comes down and then out to the side. A couple other things you can do on here is firmware updates. Um, not all uh, manufacturers support doing firmware updates over an AVDEC controller, um, but if they do and it is uh, supported in the way that is supported with this AVDEC controller, which is the way that uh, we do it for uh, Avenue and for Milan, uh, then that will work. And then you also have the clock setup. Uh, the main thing that you're going to be able to do here right now is just monitor what the different clock settings are. You can see both of these are set to master. I know that's going to cause a problem because one of them needs to be the slave. It can't all be the master. So this would at least give me a heads up that I need to go in and change some settings uh, on my MacBook uh, to be slaving off of the mixer. So there you go. Short and sweet. Not a whole lot to it. Uh, I didn't go through all of the AVDEC entity model information. A lot of that stuff just isn't going to pertain. It's more stuff that is used for how the devices communicate back and forth to each other. And so when you're just setting up a network and connecting streams, it's not information that you really need to worry about. Again, a lot of it that is shown right now is just more helpful for engineers who are developing uh, AVB products to be able to see what's going on in the network, see what things are being presented as on their devices through an AVDAT controller uh, and be able to troubleshoot and continue uh, bringing up devices that are going to be compatible uh, with everything else on the network correctly. So, but this is a great tool. It can be used on Mac and PC uh, and it can help you to connect up streams. I know that you can use the AVDEC controller that's built into the Mac OS, but this is just another alternative if you happen to be on PC or you want something else that can help run this. Um, so there you have it. A little uh, tutorial on the uh, Hive AVB AVDEC controller. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, come back and see some more videos. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a like, and hit that alert if you want to be updated to hear uh, all the new announcements of new videos that we have coming. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more on a variety of different subjects, so we're really excited about it, looking forward to it, and we'll see you again soon.